Welcome to our webinar. This time we are discussing quite generic topics on Java EE7, but we are kind of emphasizing on our tools like NetBeans and Vadin and how these can help you to master Java EE7 because in quite many applications there are similar parts that you want, need to repeat in your application. So good tooling and and mastering those tools will definitely help you to build those applications uh, at least quicker, but also maybe better. And uh, together with me here, Matt Tahmanen from Vaadin, we have a uh, Gertjan Vilenga, or it was supposed to say Gertjan or something. Gertjan. Gertjan, yeah, that's way too difficult for me. <laughs> and uh, Gertjan is the Product manager for NetBeans. Yeah. So thanks very much for inviting me to come here, and also thanks to Federic and Sami, and of course Jonas. It's a great opportunity to show the world the cool things that you can do with Vaadin using NetBeans, and also vice versa, what um, uh, NetBeans users can gain from using Vaadin as an alternative to the other JSF component libraries that are, are out there. Yeah. And. Uh, the agenda for here for this webinar is quite uh, flexible and uh, we have no slides so we are doing just mostly some practical coding and giving you examples and tips how you can use these tools and uh, also note that the webinar is recorded so this is this is maybe the most often asked question on our <laughs> questions <laughs> But is it recorded? Yes, it's recorded. You can watch it later also if you are very hurry, but of course it's nice if you can watch it through now. And uh, before we get to actual demo application development that we will be doing, we will first discuss a bit about Vaadin, because there are some people who have come here to watch some Java EE stuff, and some people who have come here to watch some NetBeans stuff, and then some people who are actually Vaadin users. So let's first get familiar with tools like Vaadin and NetBeans and then we will get to using these tools in a Java EE7 application development. Yes, so the main focus of this webinar is to take an existing application or an, exa an application that doesn't use Vaadin and to move that to start using Vaadin. So that's what we want to help people do, especially people with a NetBeans background who have a plain JSF application, how to take that application and migrate it to Vaadin. Yeah. That's the focus. Yeah. And also we will be discussing how NetBeans itself can help you mm. to generate this from the, for example, in this webinar, we are using existing database that comes with uh, NetBeans. Yeah, mm -hmm. with Glassfish, mm -hmm. yeah and uh, generate some JPA entity beans based on that and then use them in web applications. Mm -hmm. uh, but first we can look about Vaadin in this example that I have built. Yes. Uh, this is a project that is created with Vaadin NetBeans plugin, which is actually just, it's a wrapper and some extensions to amazing Maven support that there is in, uh, in NetBeans. So this is created actually based on Vaadin application archetype. So you could actually create it with plain NetBeans also so that you will, uh, this is new file, but create new project and then you could just use Maven and create project from archetype and choose Vaadin application there. But I have installed Vaadin application uh, Vaadin NetBeans plugin, yes. and there we have a shortcut for this so that you don't need to search for those. There are lots of Maven archetypes, so it might be difficult to choose the right one, but this is a small generic application process that you can use, and when you click forward, and I can just use the defaults that it suggests, it creates a new project, and then just like that you have a full Vaadin project with configure with all the required dependencies and also there is a one application stub here. What does the pump look like in this application? Uh, at this point I'd like to note it, that you don't have to look at the pump because NetBeans and Vaadin plugin is doing all the stuff that you really need to know. 
But let's so let's take a look at the at the graph of this. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So if you go to the graph at the top, okay. So you can right click in here and switch to different layouts. So maybe you want a vertical layout. Let's try that uh, one. Different views on top of the dependencies, and you can see much yeah. more easily yeah, yeah. what what links to what. Yeah. This is like these are typical big Java applications nowadays. There are lots of dependencies. And you can see where they come from. So, for example, if you don't need Vardin push, so you don't want the WebSocket-based uh, immediate updates for most applications, you don't actually need this. But then you can just remove the Vardin push dependency, and you can get rid of this part. And right-click on top of Vardin push. Yeah. Uh, maybe double-click to pop up. Yeah. So you can get zoom in more closely, and you can also delete these dependencies directly inside this graph. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not this particular one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, lots of things that Vardin plugin does is actually shortcuts for this Maven configuration. So there is a separate Vardin properties panel. And here you can choose, for example, Vardin version. You could switch to latest snapshot version or any of the stable release releases. And then lots of stuff is related to quit support because Vardin, Vardin's client side is compiled with quit that is built in the Vardin libraries. And uh, controlling that compilation is often, often needed so that you want, for example, if you want to debug some weird client side issue that you might face, if you have, for example, some unstable client side extensions mm -hmm. to Vardin, then you might want to change different kind of obfuscation for the generated JavaScript that it makes. And also uh, launching like a quit development mode. You have lots of lots of options here. And so you don't need to touch the pump files itself, but mm. you can configure them here. And also one thing that is very different is uh, with Vardin plugin is, is the built-in support for add-ons. For example, here I have already added charts into this application, and uh, I have actually auto-completed. So we could, for example, add another add-on like a lazy query container, which is often used by lazy query container. And this is, this is nowhere in, mentioned in this project before. Mm -hmm. So there is no, no dependency declaration in the POM file, mm -hmm. but Vardin plugin is smart enough to suggest this based on the input that you have been mm -hmm. putting there. So if I just choose that one and then access the license agreement nice. for this mm -hmm. add-on, it now automatically configured the project. So let's move it instantiate like that. So if we go here and look at the POM XML, there should be somewhere, yeah. You should also it. see it in the Java dependencies list um, in the projects window, if you expand yeah. uh, yeah. this guys, yeah. So somewhere in here, yeah. there's, yeah, one in lazy super. So yeah. all you had to do is autocomplete and it automatically also configures your project, not mm -hmm. just the Java files. So that's really impressive in my, uh, I have been coming from Eclipse user, yeah, I've been using Eclipse like five or six years, mm -hmm. and uh, this is nothing that exists in our official Vardin Eclipse mm -hmm. plugin. So mm -hmm. this is somewhere if you use NetBeans, then this is something that you will be really be impressed. Yeah. So maybe at this point you could explain what is Vardin in general yeah. and yeah, uh, yeah, how, sure. how it compares to other options. Uh, let's deploy this application to Clashfish. like that. And now once the class fish starts, then it will open our application like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was already open there. So the, this is the chart that was built here. Okay. So, so Vardin is like a you could consider it like a swing for web applications. Mm -hmm. 
So there are some layouts or or that is actually like panels in Swing and you can configure how they are and then you have components like here we have a chart and here we have a button and then we just add these components into layouts. Yeah, it looks a lot like Swing, yeah. this code. And here there is a button click listener for the, for the button and there there is an inline, inline listener and it just does something which is like adding new component to the existing layout which is label and it says thanks you thanks mm. for clicking so in this programming model you never need to think about uh, uh, any varding page uh, web pages or right. going from a page to another like navigation or that kind of thing you will use only java to build your application logic so how would you go from page to page or is is it more focused on single page applications so if I click here, you can see that it automatically happens there. Mm -hmm. And the label is added directly to the host page, so there's no page refresh or anything. Right. So it's, it, it makes an HTTP request to the server and it gets the kind of a new, new state, state right. that has changed. It only sends this new message here and updates the existing page. So like with JSF pages, there is usually some, some kind of full reloads for right. the page, then with Vardin this never, never happens. And now that you were asking about changing views, uh, in practice you will be using just Java and modularize your application and you will probably be building your own comp components, like you will be composing uh, new views from layouts mm -hmm. and uh, buttons and create classes mm. that extends, for example, vertical layout right. or custom component, right. which is a special button component. And then, then in some click listener, for example, if you have a button that should make you move you to another page, then you would be saying that uh, set I content, view. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, set content and uh, my view. Right. Right. For example, which yeah. is how it would work in Swing as well. Yeah, so yeah, so pretty much, yeah. pretty much the yeah. same. Often those people who are coming from Swing world are very, they can very quickly get started with yeah. one, in, yeah. especially on the very basic things. Yeah. So, what in really, it let lets you focus on, uh, on on your real application specific problems. It, yeah. it you don't have to think about how, how will I do this in a web application or no. or something. And you aren't even really aware that you're using GWT. It's it's really under the hood. Yeah. 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 Well, with Vardin, the, the separation between Vardin and GWT is so that uh, GWT applications, they are executed in JavaScript, mm -hmm. in, in browser. And uh, Vardin application is executed in, in Java virtual machine in server. So we, we also use quit and we have actually bundled quit in our jars so it makes it easier to create extensions for quit so the there is kind of a thin client that's handling all the communication and page updates and that is built with quit mm -hmm. so the complex complex uh, kind of a terminal here in the client side in the browser that that does all the web magic that's built with quit. Great. So maybe I should start creating our demo application. Yeah. Or do you want to show something about NetBiz first? Yes, yes, at the same time. Yep. Yep. So maybe we can switch. So here I have NetBeans. Um, NetBeans 8. And um, we're going to use a database. The database comes with Glassfish, as we mentioned. Um, it has a database called Sample with various tables, one called Customer, so we can look directly inside NetBeans at the data inside of our table, and we can update this table um, directly inside NetBeans and um, persist to the database. So this is a real client on top of our database, which could be anything. Um, so it doesn't so have to be Derby. It doesn't have to be Derby. We can make new connections to a whole range of different uh, databases, Oracle, mm -hmm. Postgres, MySQL. Um, and so here we see data, um, also we have code completion directly inside of our SQL um, editor. 
And in addition to this database that we'll be using, we'll also be using a server, in this case, Grassfish, but again, we could be using a different server. So you can see here, we could use Tommy, which has Java E7 support. The same is true for Wildfly. I think Tommy has Java E6 support at the moment, Six but support. they are preparing the Java right. E7 version. Right. Yeah. So uh, Tommy is ready for Java EE. Right now it has Java E6. Wildfly has Java E7. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we could be using Wildfly or we could be using Glassfish and we're using Glassfish and there's also JBoss and there's yeah. also WebLogic. Yeah. We are using Glassfish because I like Eclipse Link. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. It, it often suits better for one application because it has uh, some very good features that can reattach mm -hmm. entities that has been detached by the by the entity manager. Great. So um, that's some quick um, notes about the technologies we'll be using. So JavaDB and Glassfish. For anyone who's not used NetBeans, the starting point always is to go to File New Project or to click on this orange button. And then you can see a whole range of different uh, technologies that are supported. Yeah, but you have... I have Scala added. Yeah, but you don't have Vardin. I don't have Vardin, no. Yeah. I don't, can I, can I, you show me how you can add Vardin there? Yes. <laughs> so to have the uh, Vardin plugin included, you would go to Tools Plugins. And you can see here there's available plugins, and you can sort it by name, or you can search for it in the search box. Um, but if you go to the bottom, you'll see Vardin plugin. So yeah. you don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to go to a special plugin page. You can install it directly from inside NetBeans. Yeah. Okay. Shall we get started? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So we will create an application as most NetBeans users would create an application. Uh, we call it before Vardin because there's also going to be an after Vardin or one that has Vardin support. So this one does not have Vardin support, and it will be the basis of migrating to a Vardin application. Okay. A simple Java EE application is ready. It's got Java EE, it's got JDK 8, and it's got our POM. And Java EE 7 gives you JPA and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So here is our um, list of many different packages, including JPA, including servlets, including web services. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to do, actually, before creating any classes, is use a new plugin that's created by Gaurav Gupta, who probably is on this uh, webinar watching. So I want to demonstrate this really cool plugin that lets you make a connection to the database. So this is the same database that uh, we showed. And from the database, um, generate a diagram. So we're not creating entity classes yet. We're just creating a diagram which we can modify. So I'll click Finish. And here it is. It looks really nice and professional. Um, and this is the JPA Modeler plugin, which you can also get from the plugin manager. So I have it installed. Um, so therefore, I will find it here. And you'll see JPA Modeler. OK, so here is a view of the tables that we want to work with. And we can edit this. So for example, you can delete columns that you don't want to show or that you don't want to have rendered into entity classes. And you can change the connections between these different uh, tables. There's many different ways of modifying and customizing this. Um, you can also, as you can see here, export this to an image, which is also useful. So there's a lot of functionality built in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this diagram to generate our source code. But before we do that, we're going to say where we want the source code to be. Uh, com before Vardin. And click close here. And then we can generate the source code. And the nice thing is, is that if we change our JPA entity classes, which have now been generated, we can regenerate our diagram from, those, uh, from the changed classes. So this is a um, real round trip uh, modeling um, for, for JPA. Um, so what we have here is a customer class, a discount code class. So these are JPA entities for the three tables that we want to work with. Yeah. So there was more tables in the database, but you only yes. chose customer. Yes, we chose and customer and the other two had foreign keys. Yeah, yeah. so uh, they were dependent on that. Yeah. So they were also generated. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is our starting point. So this is the model for the um, example. 
if I press Control Shift Enter, then I get a kind of text editor view on everything, which is kind of nice as well for working yeah, with. Yeah, especially that we have big font for the exactly. Google Butchers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Also that. Um, so I'll switch back again. So this is not um, a maximized mode, uh, which is Alt Shift Enter. And so this is maximized, but um, instead this is distraction free mode. So all the things around it, yeah. around this. So, uh, so you can only uh, concentrate on the real thing, the yes, code. Exactly. So yeah. a real code view. Okay. So we have this. Um, now mm. next we're going to generate our JSF pages from these entity classes that we have, that we generated from that diagram. So click next. Um, so I'll specify where these should be created. So we're going to have some EJBs. Um, we're going to have uh, some JSF. You can also see that we can override these. So if the database has changed, we can recreate our entity classes, we can recreate our front end. We can also customize all the templates that are going to be used. Um, so you could um, change the templates, add your own logos, etc. You're not locked into the templates that are used by NetBeans. They're not, they're not hard coded. You can change them if you need them to be changed. So we click finish. And we now have. First of all, and we're going to look at this in the next part, we have some facades, so our customer facades. We will look at these. So these are our EJBs, um, which all extend a common abstract facade, which provides our CRUD functionality. Yeah, so this is, we had a webinar with Spring a few months ago, and in Spring they have this Spring data that kind of uh, creates this kind of thing on the fly. But, right. but in NetBeans you can use, or in Java EE, you can use an uh, abstract class that does practically the same as well, and then you can customize it there very easily yes. also. Yes, right, you can customize it right in here. And there's controllers that we're going to look at more in this utility class. So at this point, um, we also have um, our front end, which is just using plain JSF. So for example, for customer, we have a page for editing, one for creating, one for listing, one for viewing. So we have actually everything. Uh, I'm going to deploy this to the embedded browser, which is nice because we won't have to switch to a different browser um, in this demo. We'll just stay directly inside NetBeans. And when it's deployed, we'll see this um, application deployed in the Glassfish node here. It's still deploying. Let's refresh. And there it is. Okay, so here is before Vaden. Um, in the services window, we can see it's deployed. And so here's the first page, which is the index page. And we go to our customers. Here are our customers um, from our database. Can you maximize that? So we can maximize this one as well, uh, I believe. Okay, here we go. So here we have a full CRUD application. We can create a new customer here. Um, we can edit, we can view, we can delete. Um, but what I want to show before we switch to the to converting this to Vardan is that we can also browse the actual DOM. So you can see here I have a browser DOM and as I move my mouse up and down I can see where I am inside the browser. Yeah. Uh, and this is also supported for Chrome. Yeah. So um, this is convenient. So for example, let's see, see this label here, this next 10, which is in red. So here I can see there's the color. And here I can actually change the color as well. So now it's a different color. You can see it's immediately updated. Um, but what you can also see is I can jump into the source from here. So normally you would have no clue where that color is defined. So I can yeah, jump into the source. Yeah, you have so many templates there for a simple application. How would you, <laughs> even, even for a simple application, how would you know? So you can jump directly in here, and then I do control space for code completion. I get all the colors, and I can make my change. And again, it's immediately updated. Um, so you can see here is this change. Jump into the source. So this provides a unified view on top of all of these templates that have been created and really helps in, uh, in working with them quickly and efficiently. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, 
So oh. shall we next look at how you can get rid of those templates altogether? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave this too bad. And <clears throat> yeah. So I think we should switch. Okay. This is practically the same application that you have creating there. And uh, lots of this code is about these JSF templates. And, uh, and I really personally don't like to work with this. And I think there are lots of Java de developers, mm. who, especially backend guys, kind right. of, who, want, who don't want to use this JSF. And they don't want to th think about this client-server communication at all. So Varden is a perfect match for them because with them we can, well, we can, for example, start by deleting the faces config, the web XML, we won't be needing that either. And then all of these templates, they are useless, I think, with Varden. And then also in the Java side, there is also quite a lot of code that is needed for JSF. These controllers, these, although these are kind of separated logic from the from the views, but in practice they are very dependent to JSF. So mm -hmm. they, these these are just needed for JSF. So in Vardin you don't you probably want to have your own kind of own controllers, but you don't probably you probably don't have any anything from here that you will use. And also this stuff. <laughs> it's almost nothing left. <laughs> almost nothing left, yeah. The next part would be, of course, to add dependencies for Vardin. And, uh, and uh, of course, when we are working in Java EE, then it's good to have an add-on called Vardin CDI, which is practically, it helps you, helps you to use dependency injection in all Java EE applications, not just in Java EE 7, but in all applications. Uh, I have here a separate project, this one, and this is also posted to the forum page, so you can see this link for, for it, the sources it's, it's of It's on this. GitHub. Yeah, it's on yeah. GitHub. It's a very nice starting point yeah. for a uh, Vardan application. Yeah, so let's check out what this has eaten. So this has only only core Vardan stuff in it, and uh, it has a application stub. Okay, this one is actually because I haven't cleaned the application before the demo, but there is like two views normally here mm -hmm. and uh, and it has this menu that updates based on the f fact that how, how it finds some annotations on the on the project. And in the example view there we have some some simple wiring combo wiring applications here. Mm -hmm. And there because this is now using this CDI add-on, then we are marking our views with this kind of annotation. So this example maps to maps to this kind of URL. Okay. So this is fully indexable by Google, for example, but it doesn't, you, you don't need to reload the page, mm -hmm. even, in, even in old browsers where you cannot programmatically change the address. And uh, we can get into the same place, the same state by creating also those JPA contain J entities from NetBeans. Mm. So we will create entity classes from database. Yep. And I will choose the same sample database and customer yep. and going there. So this is practically the same thing that you did, yep. but without this, this without the graph graphical yeah. Yeah. designer. Yeah. So now we have uh, our domain models here. So, so we have the same JPA entities. Mm -hmm. And then we also want those facades that you had there. Mm -hmm. That was the last piece that I didn't delete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, those are session beans from entity classes. So, so, so you can create them even if, even if you don't want the JSF yeah, uh, front end. Yeah, right. then you can separately generate them. You could also for example, have a separate jar file which contains this mm -hmm. this stuff, and then share that with a JSF application mm -hmm. and Vardin application if you have both both technologies. So. Right. But this is also shows how nice it is that uh, with Java EE you have uh, convention over 
configuration so yeah. so the, these wizards can be created because yeah. it we, we know where everything should be um, yeah. in the Java EE application. Yeah, and of course, because we are working with Java, we could, for example, move this class into some other, let's move it there to the top level of the. Right, that's nice. Yeah. And then we could also, I made a mistake there when when generating the entity classes, yeah. I made them into JPA, AGB yeah. class, so we can just refactor them up here. Like that. Oh, where is Are they not copied somehow? On the package, yeah. Yep. Refactor. Refactor. Like that. Okay. So now we have a facade yep. that we don't need to do any. Need to. Fixes. Yeah, something from I did something bad there, <laughs> and uh, so we don't need to write anything like entity manager dependent stuff. That mm -hmm. everything came automatically here. But so the next thing would be using these JPA entities in our Vardin views. Vardin views. So this is the point where we can begin integrating. Yeah, this is good. Uh, this is the example view. I can code something here directly. Mm -hmm. uh, I can just use inject, and then I can get a customer facade. Let's call it CF and import the inject annotation. So now we have a facade here, and we can access it here in the binding code. So. We are working the post construct so that this is already wired. Mm -hmm. So CF get uh, find all. So this is how we get all the customers from the mm -hmm. database, and we have them in Java list. Mm -hmm. And handling that Java list in Vardin should be easy. So I will use a Vardin table or actually extension over Vardin table here. Okay. And uh, it's customer, and I will also explicitly say this type here. Yep. And now I have finding component and list of pojos, mm -hmm. and then if I want to connect them, I can use this. Just set beans. Yep, like that. Cool. And then the last thing to do is to add it to the component, add component like. And it's table. nice that you have all this in Java, directly in Java. Yeah. 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 I don't need to learn any HTML or JavaScript yeah. or, or JSF. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention that these IDEs like NetBeans and Eclipse, all they have been born from the Java world. So mm -hmm. refactoring tools it's better and, in Java. And, yeah, yeah, they are amazing in Java. You can do pretty much everything, and it still works. And, and plus, you don't have to switch between a, a JSF page and a Java class and, and break your your coding uh, yeah. uh, style or yeah. you know just continue working in Java. Yeah, yeah, you can you can always work with Java, so you have you can have kind of one one chat and work with that. Mm. So, uh, let's deploy that and see what we have. All the data. Ah, lots of data. Mm -hmm. We probably don't want to see all these. All these. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's configure it so that it only shows some of the Properties, so we want to have something like a customer ID and name. name yeah. Now a click, and it that means automatically redeploys yeah. the application. There's no explicit need to, to right click and yeah. to run again and yeah. things like that. And that means it actually made this much smoother if somebody has been thinking that it, it's slow to redeploy mm -hmm. the application. It's faster in the yeah, case. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. fast. Uh, mm. But actually, I think this is, this is a wrong way of using it with properties. Uh, 
sorry about that. I, I used visible properties. Customer oh, ID and name. Like that. Now okay. we have the customer ID and name. So now I would like to uh, click on the row in the table and see the selected data in yeah. uh, some kind of label. Yeah, so this is Java and we have listeners, so add, uh, uh, add uh, value change listener. Mm -hmm. Okay, it creates, maybe I should get to this mode because what was the combination? Escape. Escape. A command shift and enter. Oh, enter, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. On Mac it's command shift yeah. enter. And here we have the event for the stuff. So we can for example use notification, which is a built in mechanism in Vadin. And show some message there. Selected event. Get value, so now we have a reference mm. to the customer, and then, for example, so which name? Mm. Selected. It doesn't really matter. It probably does not. <laughs> so, just refresh the browser and, and let's click. See. Yeah. And it nice. Okay. But the next thing that we want to do is, of course, create the form mm -hmm. because we want to edit this. Mm -hmm. And uh, for when we were preparing for this webinar, uh, I was considering that uh, would I like to write each field for, because we will need uh, each field for each of those properties that were in this table. Mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, maybe I don't want to write that in the webinar, I want to somehow mm -hmm. auto-generate it like we did for the JSF application. Mm -hmm. And then this guy <laughs> came with an idea that mm -hmm. oh, maybe we can mm -hmm. create an add-on for... Yeah. It was, a, it was a great idea. So yeah. let's, let's show it. Yeah. So this was created in a very agile way. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> like four hours and <laughs> one blog post. <laughs> yeah. So now there is a tool, an add on to NetBeans that you can a, use. NetBeans plugin called Entity Expander. Yeah. And it's on the plugin portal if anyone yeah. wants to try it. And uh, I can create my own templates that are, th that they have parameters from this entity that I cho chose it. Hmm. So I can create a form for based on those properties that are in the customer. Mm -hmm. So here we have all the fields yep. that were also in this customer object. So there is fax number and name and mm. phone and jeep and mm. I really didn't want to write this all yeah. by myself. And now I will probably want to move this form here also because I don't want to mix it with my domain model. Mm -hmm. And uh, then instead of showing the notification, we could mm. add this form here. Inject uh, customer form. So what is it, what is Madon? That's a Vaden library. Yeah, that's a that's just a jar file mm -hmm. that contains some helpers that I have been creating when when working with some Vardin applications. Mm -hmm. So so this Madon, it, it's for example, it uses, it's used in this table. So this is a custom version of Vardin table mm -hmm. that uses a better typed mm -hmm. API than with the default Vardin application. But you don't need to use it, the idea is the same if mm -hmm. you use with core Vardin, but it, it just lets me code it a bit faster. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> this form, we can, f for example, add it there in in the layout also. Form. So now we have the form there, and then in the value change listener, we still need to put this customer into the form. So the form had a method called set bean or set entity, mm -hmm. and then just get it from from the event. It's amazing. Like that. So, okay. So we have the form here. Right. So all the generated form, and then we, if we select the 
mm. component it automatically wires here. Yeah. And then actually here is some part that the code generator doesn't do automatically, at least at this point. We, mm -hmm. I think we could do it pretty easily, mm -hmm. but it, it has uh, this select list used for relation. Mm -hmm. It has unpopulated it, but that's a great place to show how easy it is to do coding with Wadin because you are always working in the in the server. So this is the select component that was here, mm -hmm. and we will need to populate the data for this discount code type. So now we can just inject the discount code facade. What happened? First get the Maybe uh, I should import it. Part, yeah. It's not understanding. Code fashard. Like that. Oh, it keeps it's a feature. Feature, not it's a bug. A feature. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Okay. 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 So now we have the Facade to another entity type, and then yeah. we can here just populate the stuff into the discount code field. Mm -hmm. So, discount code set options facade find all options, mm -hmm. and that's oh, it. Okay, so now we should have. Populate it there. It's then we have not really nice though. No, uh, but this is, this is Java, so we can just add some more configurations there. Discount code set caption generator or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that, and then we have the option, and we will want to just return. Yeah, that's a, mm. that's the identifier, and yeah. that's enough probably here. Yeah. Semicolon. Yep. So now we should have also same values there in the drop down. And when we save a change, is it actually saved at this point? Uh, I think not. <laughs> we can try it. Mm. Okay, there's Error some kind message. of ex yeah. exception. Okay. Yeah, we still didn't wire the mm. logic to actually save the entity back to the facade mm. via the facade the database. So let's go to the example view, and here, here we have the form, mm -hmm. and then we can do some configurations for the form. Form set save handler mm. like that. Nice. Now it's autocomplete there, and then we already had the facade here. It was CF. So how is that save button hooked up to Edit. this uh, save handler? Is it built into the into the save button? Mm, yeah, or kind of because it's using uh, this abstract form uh, class, okay. which uh, which is a Vardin component and it's plain Java. You mm -hmm. can you probably want to customize this for your needs in mm -hmm. your application, but this is just a very generic form. Mm -hmm. It has a uh, it has practically save and cancel mm. buttons and then listeners for them. Mm. And then... Nice yeah, toolbar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a helper class that is used by by the class that I wrote for this. Mm. You can write it from the scratch, but probably it's very good to have mm. this kind of mm. stuff in Java so that you don't need to rewrite everything mm. for this very similar cases, because we probably have also this uh, uh, discount code that we would like to mm. have and very very same action. But the other thing we're seeing is uh, is a light bulb here. Yeah. Oh, this one. We wanted to talk about this as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using Java 8 and it suggests me to use mm. Lambda. Hooray! <laughs> so <laughs> we are almost in par with the Scala people now. <laughs> <laughs> we can also get rid of that. That can be also like E. Now it's even shorter. Yeah. Or if we separate this thing into another method, like introduce method, save customer, mm -hmm. right? Then I think we should be able it's to. It's a number use reference. Yes. yes. 
Hooray. So we have a reference to the actual method of this object. And, and, and we can also search through all of the application for similar uh, instances okay. of this. So right click on the project. Mm, here. And go to inspect and transform. Okay. And then go to manage. Um, yeah, we've got them selected. General, there is one. Um, use functional operations and also one on the JDK migration support. And you see there's a convert yeah. to lambda. Okay, yeah. so now run this on the whole application. And press inspect, inspect, and then inspect again. It's going to be different. Okay, so there is yeah. already quite a lot of. I'm so accustomed to the inner classes and stuff, but there's lots mm. of lots of stuff places where yeah. we can. Okay, there we could use so functional what, what, reference. What will happen if you click on this one? How would this be converted? Uh, you can see it there, oh, but it's it there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, map, but and, uh, map, map and filter. Yeah, yeah. If it yeah. looks like that. Map filter and for each. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. which one I can understand better here <laughs> in this case, but yeah. but with li inline listeners, this is definitely something mm -hmm. that we want to do. So yeah. definitely, we could do them yeah. all once. Yeah. Okay, because I changed it once. Then yeah. yeah. So okay. now yeah. now it changed all the yeah. inline listeners the classes to lambda mm -hmm. expressions. Perfect. Oh, and actually also the caption generator. So we are just now passing the discount code. Mm -hmm. To and that method, yeah. So that's that's really readable. <laughs> it is, <laughs> even though I don't know that well. Yeah, Java eight yet. Yeah. I've been using it, but I'm I'm too accustomed with the old Java. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And uh, one thing I still like to show from the entity expander mm -hmm. is that you don't. Yeah. This this new add-on that we built mm. during the preparations is that. You don't need to use only those two examples that there are. Th mm. Those are just examples mm -hmm. for for the templates. So I have also built other ex other templates than the form. So this is the form that I actually mm. used just previously. I can create one form for mm. discount code, but then I also created a template for creating a table view. Actually, two table views. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much the one yeah. that we coded there. So let's create one. And we can also create another one with the yeah. create menu item. Yeah, yeah, I will create that there. And I can show you how they are modified or created. It's OK. I will use this because I don't find those templates. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. And then there is um, uh, entities. Entities, right. Yeah. Hey, so th yeah. This, this folder contains all the mm. templates that are specific to this, mm -hmm. this add-on. And here, here is, for example, the form that we used. You can open it in an editor. And this is mar uh, free, it's free, free marker. marker. Yeah, free marker. Yeah. And, uh, and the add-on, it provides you some details about the selected entity type. And then you can just do some, some magic here. Mm -hmm. I, I made this a bit more complicated than the default one that's there. Yeah. But you can do pretty much with the free marker and, and the data that we provide there. So, mm. so I think this will be quite generic tools, not, yeah. not just for Vardin developers. Yeah. But yeah. And also, if you checked out the menu, you also saw here a panel. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this was one by made, made by you. And yeah. this is for spring, uh, spring, uh, swing applications. Yeah, yeah, a swing panel is generated yeah. from that. Yeah. So this is the form. Or this is the table view that I just generated there. So mm -hmm. it's practically pretty much the same that, mm. that's done there, but it, it was generated automatically. Mm. And it also I think it also has add button and stuff. So now we can generate one in application as easily as you can do with those JSF yeah. generators that you had there. Yeah. So that's true. Let's try it. And the nice thing is also that the user can create those templates. You don't yeah. have to work yeah. in the, inside you, the plugin. You most definitely don't want to have this kind of applications. You will have, want to have something that's more specific to your application. Mm. So you definitely want to modify it. So this is automatically generated. And then you can open it for editor. Right, so, here's the pop-up. So, yeah. yeah. So this is in window, but the actual form there is at the same. Mm -hmm. But it was just wrapped in the Vardin component. It was pretty easy to do with Vardin. Yeah. If you go through Book of Vardin or anything, you will be mastering this yeah. in a one day. 
So is, is Vaden really well suited for single page applications or yeah, anything? Well, well, ac what's, actually, what's the, Vardin, Vardin is most, by default, it's always single page application because, mm, right, right. because everything is ha happening with, uh, with Ajax. So, mm -hmm. so we will be updating it on the live. So, mm. so here when we select a new entity here, the whole page does not, is not rendered on the mm. server side. It's right. not transferred from the client to server. The thing that is transferred is only that some rules that create a window and create their text field and a drop down select and and save and cancel buttons mm. and that's it mm. so then the client side engine here it generates the changes here and that's why it's fast mm. all, all changes are are snappy if, unless there is of course something that's blocking the server side mm. you can have mm. a slow query or something right, right. and that's also often the reason why some not not just one application, mm. but all web applications. If they become slow, then they are usually database yeah. issues. Yeah. Cool. But with Vardin, you are not tied to database, of course. You can use Java serialization for mm -hmm. persistency or Neo4j or practically yeah. any Java Java approach that you want to use. So you don't need to necessarily use JPA. Mm. But that's a very natural choice, of course, in Java EE right, applications. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. I think we've covered everything on our program. Yeah, I think so. So I think I think the next thing to do is to cover some questions, and we do have lots of them. So at this point, I'd like to mention that we cannot go through all the questions. We no. have about ten minutes time. Yeah. But you can still use, for example, the new Tory forum that we had, and add your questions there below the YouTube video. And uh, then we will be paying extra attention at least tomorrow and answer them mm -hmm. there. I will try to answer all the questions that are arised there. Um, yeah. Let's go through the questions. Maybe one of the most popular questions that we had after what is Vardin and mm. uh, and uh, can you only use Glassfish or can you use any other web servers? Was that uh, is there going to be a visual designer for the UI mm. elements in NetBeans for Vardin? Asked by Eric and Slavek and Greg and, and Vignes. And I think there was actually someone else also who also. asked it. <laughs> I forgot it from the list. Uh, that has been really really asked question and there you might know that there is a visual editor in Net, NetBeans plugin but I think uh, in Eclipse plugin at, Eclipse at, plugin, at right, this point right. but I think that's the only part actually where I still favor our Eclipse plugin mm -hmm. in all mm -hmm. the other places I think our yeah. NetBeans plugin is better and uh, we will definitely do this at some point but uh, before that we will do some serious refactoring for the module that we use currently in our Eclipse plugin. Mm -hmm. So we will try to make it as modular as possible so that it's very easy to embed the component mm. in, in Eclipse plugin or NetBeans plugin or any other yeah. IDE plugin yeah. or even in your own application. So right. if you have some dynamic forms for example that you would like to use in, in, a, in some very large application mm. then you might want to use this mm. this application um, but also the question is um, how how relevant is it to have a, a GUI editor that's a discussion we've had in the NetBeans community for years and it seems that um, once people are comfortable with a particular framework they don't need a, a, a GUI designer anymore and it's really for beginners to a particular framework or technology and also it's useful for, for uh, prototyping yeah but once people are comfortable with it, they tend to use the source code anyway. So it's a worthwhile question to ask whether the uh, amount of time that would be needed to invest in a GUI editor is worth, worth the time spent versus working on something yeah. else. Yeah, it really helps you to get started. Exactly. Both, yeah. both if you have a new technology right. and also if you are, for example, in this case, it might be easy. Right. We, we, if we, if we would have a visual designer, then we could just open the generated UI classes mm. here and then just reorder or right. change the size of some components right, and right, it would right. be really nice. Yeah. I have 
once done this kind of project in Vardin with the with the NetBeans mm -hmm. uh, with the Eclipse plugin, mm -hmm. but but uh, I think it, uh, I also think that it's quite rare actually. Mm. That's that so. It would be nice to have definitely. It would be yeah. good to yeah. have that in NetBeans too. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Next question. Oh, this one was actually kind of answered just to go there. So this is asking that Francois is asking that how to make single page applications with Warin and uh, also web sockets. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the kind of applications that you are doing with yeah, Warin. That's basically how Warin works. Yeah. Right. So 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 you never practically have these kind of real page transitions, they are always kind of simulated. You will mm -hmm. just swap the content or swap one part of the UI mm -hmm. and change it there. You can also have uh, different URLs for your views. So you can have UI with a different name there mm -hmm. and then uh, then navigate between those, but mm. that's not needed. Mm. You practically don't need it. And then about this WebSocket thing, uh, you only need to actually. I could show it from the IDE. Mm -hmm. So, so we have a. I have this project here, and uh, it has Varin UI. And if you, by default, it uses still a, a normal X, XML HTTP requests to do the communication, and it's usually enough. But especially in applications where you have a lots of updates like some monitoring applications or uh, or or chat applications or something then you might want to have the changes from the server very quickly and also actually to make the communication faster and more efficient you might want to use websocket based communication and if i add annotation here called mm -hmm. push import it and save it now it's using websockets mm -hmm. Now, now you can have an other user's UI and uh, send message to all other in the same same mm. server, and uh, updates will just happen. Amazing. So, just like just like with the other web technologies, push with Vardin mm. is it's it's really easy. You mm. don't need to think about the push. Yeah. yeah. I just enabled it and yeah. then just work yeah. with it. Cool. But there is one gotcha actually that you need to do with push which is quite often problem so if you have, if you would be referencing to another ui here and uh, doing change there then vadin has no possibilities to do synchronization probably so if the user would be changing the ui himself and then some other U user would be changing the same data for example i think adding new messages then there might be some conflicts and uh, then you could use a there is get UI and then access. So you can wrap your changes in a runnable and in a runnable. And then if you make it here, your change mm. then Vadin will take the care of the synchronization. If there is an ongoing request from mm. by the by the other user, by the other UI then Vardin will just postpone this okay. change a bit and then execute it when it's mm. when the change is over. So it's pretty easy to do mm. dynamic applications also with which communicate to each other. Great. How much time do we have left? Oh, wow. <laughs> Indeed, we have <laughs> we have been busy. About one minute. <laughs> there will be lots of questions. I wonder what we want to take here next. We can take one or two questions still. Are there advantages in using this plugin instead of the Eclipse plugin? It asks Pankoti. Yeah. Apart from the fact that you are using NetBeans instead of Eclipse. Indeed, that, <laughs> that is itself an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I in JFocus, I was in a, your Mm. speaks where you were dis discussing with differences of different IDs and mm. it was very nice actually. Mm. You didn't just 
blame Eclipse to be a bad. No, no, <laughs> but, no, yeah. no. But there definitely. are there are good good parts of no. in every, in yeah, definitely. All, all major IDEs and. It's great that there are so many because it means that we have to mm. compete with with the others, and uh, I think it's great. Yeah. Especially that there's IntelliJ, Eclipse, and NetBeans. That uh, it, it makes all three of the IDEs much better than they would be if there was only yeah. one. Definitely. It's good to have competition. Mm. Yeah. But uh, if you just want to compare Vardin mm. NetBeans plugin to Eclipse NetBeans plugin, I think NetBeans plugin is actually much more for Vard at this time because it, it has much better Maven support yeah. and Maven is used by most real yeah. projects. And uh, it's got absolutely best Vardin add-on support made by our Dennis Anisimov. It mm. was a great enhancement. Yeah. So the thing that I saw there in the beginning, yeah. you don't need to go to Vardin directory and search for your add-on. That mm. this is the Maven snippet I want to add to my project. You can yeah. just autocomplete there. Yeah. And actually, the interesting thing is that the the, the key engineer at Vardin working on the NetBeans support is an ex NetBeans team member. <laughs> so yeah. that's what makes the, the, the NetBeans plugin so good because he really knows um, what he's doing and he's worked on the NetBeans APIs for years. Yeah. But the one that's still missing from the NetBeans thing is, is this visual yeah. designer. Yeah. So that, that's really something that I have sometimes mm. missed, but mm. yeah. quite rarely actually. Yeah. So that's definitely a part that we need to improve here. And in Eclipse integration, we definitely want to make it yeah. work better with Maven. Yeah. I think I think most people would agree that on the, on the level of Maven support, NetBeans is definitely better yeah, than, yeah. than Eclipse. Yeah, yeah, and that's not dependent on Varden support. It's not dependent on Varden yeah. support. Yeah. It's just um, you know, if you have a any project with a POM file in it, NetBeans will automatically recognize it as a as a Maven project and open it and yeah. use the POM file as a project definition. Yeah, which is quite unique and special. Yeah. Net, uh, Eclipse has been improving there a lot lately, but it's mm. still not at the level. So, especially the like two years ago, it was almost horrible to use Maven with Eclipse. It, it was just not working very well. Uh, looks like we have our director commenting that we can take another ten minutes here, so we can still take some other questions. Maybe this one. Uh, okay, sure. So, Bob is asking how Vardin compares to prime faces. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is a prime faces component that's in prime faces but not in Vardin, could I somehow incorporate that in the Vardin based systems? Okay. And there's also one example about tree selection checkbox. And, uh, and uh, I could say first that this is practically just a tree that we have in Vardin but it has just some theme on it, so that the selection means that there should be a different kind of CSS theme. Mm -hmm. So we could add, a, when standard VAD in 3, it's pretty, I'd say, how would I say it, politically correct. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, <laughs> it has just some uh, small triangle there, and uh, if you select it, it just gets darkened to, okay. to select. But uh, in this, uh, Prime faces. There is a there is a cute theme for three selection mm. checkbox that it it has a checkbox there, and if you click anywhere in the three three item, then mm. it checks the, the checkbox. So okay. so I think we have a pretty good theme wizards here in Vardin. I think any of those could just spend half an hour and they could come up with something similar. Mm. So you can use standard CSS and images there mm. in Vardin themes, and you can customize the look and feel of. Mm. Well, standard Vardin components, and you can in this way create components. So it, it means that if you have a prime faces component, you can't directly reuse it, but you have to rewrite it. Probably not, because mm. prime faces is, uh, right. as, as we saw there, it's template based. Mm. Exactly. But yeah. Vardin is component based. Yeah. But you can pretty easily create Vardin components mm -hmm. by yourselves. In, in the Vardin NetBeans plugin, there is a shortcut for archetype that generates you a project with a Vardin uh, widget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's Vardin archetype widget. And that, that can be used to create custom widgets for Vardin. Mm. So there will be a server-side co component that actually provides the API for you that you will be using. Mm -hmm. And then there will be the quit widget. 
And in this quit widget, you can do pretty much anything and you mm. can still use Java. So, okay. so you don't need to get into jQuery hacking or anything mm. that you can, you can just use plain Java also in the client side. Good. Mm. But then of course there is this uh, quit compilation and uh, quit coding things that, for example, you cannot use all Java libraries mm -hmm. there because the code is executed in, in JavaScript, not in, not in JVM. Sure. And also, also, if there are missing components that, that you'd like to use in Vardin, we have a very active community mm -hmm. and our community is making a lot of add-ons. And most of those add-ons, I'd say, I think most of them are also listed in vardin.com slash directory. Okay. So it's a very good service for looking some components that you think that maybe this is missing from right. Vardin. Right. You just find it there and so, so that means that you that it gives you some code, or it gives you a, a, a jar that you include, or yeah, it's a what in add-ons are basically jar files. Mm -hmm. We can check it out from the web. So vadin dot slash directory. Mm -hmm. So there is like four. And four yeah, so there's mm. quite quite a lot of. Tables, so you have a filter, and these are all free, or can they be? I uh, think, yeah, most of these are mm. free. Okay, so it's possible to sell Vardin components through the directory. Actually, there was a possibility to sell Vardin mm. components here, and it's still possible for us. We are selling actually Vardin charts, for ah, example. Nice. Uh, Vardin charts is based on a Norwegian uh, component called High Charts, mm -hmm. and it, it's very compa compatible. Uh, that's a very good charting library, and mm -hmm. we have made our own uh, own add-on based on that. It's mm -hmm. actually it's a plain JavaScript component, this high charge, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, replicated the same API in Java. Mm -hmm. So, and and that costs some some dollars, but most mm -hmm. most of the add-ons are free, and I think most of them are Apache two license, so it's very very easy to add them to your project, and. If you don't want to go to the web page, you can also use it here. All right, that's true. Yeah. So, so you so you can use the autocomplete that we actually used here already. So if you know the name, of, if you know the name of a class, you can just yeah, type it yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. If if you have used it before, it's more most likely more handy to just use the hmm. autocomplete there and add, add the dependency. But there is also in the Vardin menu here. Yeah. You can go to add-on browser. Oh, nice. So this is. Uh, wow. This is so this is. NetBeans UI for the same data that was on the website. So this is this has a link to the directory. This is yeah. what you yeah, see yeah. here is on the in, yeah. in the directory. All this is oh. in the directory, and here. And you get descriptions when you click on the on the text. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So there's the there's, there, there's yeah. the madam yeah. that cool. we were using here. Yeah. For example, it, let's let's take some. So there's drag and drop layouts. Mm -hmm. This component, I can just add it there. Mm -hmm. Nice. Accept it. This is pretty much the same as autocomplete, but you you had the list there. Yeah. And now now I have the drag and drop layouts here as a dependency. Drag. Yep. There and then I should be able to use it here. Nice. Let's drag and drop. Well, I'll probably need to check out the out from the dependencies there. What kind of classes are there? DD. DD, DD absolute layout. Yep, there it is. Yeah. Wow, very so, nice. So basically, they, those are just char files. Yeah. And they have some special uh, headers mm -hmm. so that our tooling can easily automatically compile possible client-side extensions that mm. there might be. For example, this, this adds some quit magic to the client-side so that you can use drag and drop in any layout there is. And uh, it needs to do some quit, quit tricks. But mm. here you actually don't need to touch anything if mm. you don't want to. Yeah. So now, now if I just rebuild the project here, it will automatically Note that there is a change so in this the client side code, and it will start the quit compilation. And next time you deploy it to the server, it will be 
fine. But this kind of relates also to another question that's um, from Deb Malia. Do we need to install the plugin in NetBeans 8 for Vaden? It's clear that you don't you don't need to, but if you do, you will have access to the directory, for example. Yeah. That comes from the Vaden plugin. Yeah. If you don't have the Vaden plugin, you, you will just use plain Maven. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, this, this same thing that happened here. This yeah. was practically just a Maven target that yeah, Maven sure. installed. Yeah. Or, or you could run other Maven targets here. Uh, run. Yeah, so these come from the plugin. Uh, custom goal. So yeah. this is a custom goal for Maven target. So you can use Vaadin and uh, something or... And, and they're also listed down here. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the bad way to do it. Yeah. So you can, there's a JT plugin configured yeah. in the ex example project. So you can yeah. just click on that and it launches the JT. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a ni nice addition in, in the latest net feature. Yeah, it's, this is a net means eight new feature. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you don't need to look at all look at all those, or Google the, <laughs> Google yeah. the Maven targets. You can just yeah. automatically use them. Yeah. There. Okay, cool. I think we have used our extra ten minutes yes. now, and we will quit it this time. But yes. hopefully, we can make some kind of similar webinar sometimes in the future. Definitely. And we should do that to celebrate the GUI designer yes. for that and Visual the designer <laughs> for NetBeans. Yes, <laughs> after that. Yes. Um, Thanks very much for yeah. this opportunity to share the NetBeans ecosystem with Vardin users and vice versa. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Bye.